Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for, for taking the time uh, to come at, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I know it's not the best of times, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, this room was only available at this time. Uh, and for those of you that know, last year we were down at Alistero. Uh, that was a cluster. So uh, I feel we have a little bit more room here, um, and this was probably our best fit. Um, there's a few of us are here today. My name is Dale Escobar, and I'm, I'm the SLIP coordinator for the SLIP program. Um, I have my colleague here, Maribel Barrios. Uh, she, she's a, a, a strong help in, in, in the field of uh, the SLIP uh, program. Um, then we have Patricia Vogel. She is the one that does all the scheduling for the Y connections, okay, all the sewer taps, okay? You would reach out to her. Her business card's up here. If you don't have it, if you need it, um, she will be uh, able to answer some of your questions. Um, then we have Stephanie. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce her last name. That's my apologies. Anyway, she's up at the public works counter. She, uh, um, she issues your public works uh, permits uh, for the Y connections taps. Um, and anything that needs to deal with the public work side of it. We have Adam. Um, he's here to observe. <laughs> Answer any questions that you, you know, on that side as well. To my, to my right, your left, we have Michelle Beeson. She is from National Plant Services. Um, she is gonna be talking about her product uh, towards the end of this uh, presentation, okay? Um, for those of you that may have questions for her, She'll be able to answer them. She does have a handout. Um, and then um, her information is also um, available. So with that, um, you guys all grabbed a, um, a handout from the, the table, I hope, right? The first one I, I would like to address is uh, slip uh, procedure requirements. Um, Bullet point one, uh, I'm, I'm gonna save that because that's gonna be for uh, my superintendent or my, man, my manager uh, to come in and speak uh, in about an hour and on that, okay? Um, when it comes to condition assessments, we're getting a, a lot of pushback from the property owners um, and, and they're feeling they're being, they're getting uh, inaccurate information from the plumbers after I send off a letter. Um, so we want to, we want to maintain strong honesty with these, th these residents and, and commercial properties as best we can. Okay. I'm not trying to take business away from you, but let, let's be honest with them. I mean, if something's going to have to get done, then it's going to have to get done. Um, if there's roots in the line, please don't tell the, the resident or owners that the line's in great condition or good condition, because we get a lot of that, okay? Because obviously there is a defect, because if there's roots entering that ladder at a joint, obviously there is something wrong at that point. The, the mortar's deteriorating, whatever it may be, so we are having issues with that, okay? Um, you guys are doing a video. We only recommend it when we send out the letter, um, to have the line clean prior to doing your inspection. That's only a recommendation on our part when we send out the letter. But if you guys are out there doing the video inspecting, inspection, then we would hope that if you guys come across roots, that you would tell them, hey, look, there's roots in here. We should probably jet this. We should probably um, snake this before we submit this video. Because what's gonna happen is that I'll get a video in, it's full of roots. I'll turn around and send a letter out now I'm gonna require them to jet it and then re-inspect it. So that's more money for them. So if we could just get you guys to see, hey, sell that part, that's better for you and it's better for us, okay? Um, as you all are aware, or most of you should be aware, last year we, we brought up the fact that we're no longer gonna take black and white videos. So if you have a black and white camera um, this year, as of tomorrow, we will no longer accept black and white videos, 
Okay. Um, I haven't seen too many, but that's the direction that, that uh, we're going in now. Um, all the videos that are, are, are being submitted, we need you guys to label them. A lot of them are not getting labeled, so if they slip out, fall, it can be a mix-up. Especially if the, the property owners want the videos back, they have to be identified. Um, no more taping. I don't know who was doing it. Somebody's been taping the, the USBs to the inspection forms, and then when I go to rip them off, I'm ripping the paper, and that's pretty much useless for us. So let's not tape them. Maybe get an envelope, put them in the envelope, write the name of the, the uh, owner and uh, um, address, and then we can put it aside and let us know if they want it back. We'll get it back to them, okay? Um, permits for new buildings or remodels. Um, all those cases come to public works. They do not get sent to Alistero. Okay, so all those cases come here to the 630 Garden Street location. Okay, so if you guys would help out and get those here, that would be a big help. Along those lines, the Alistero is working on getting the uh, gates locked uh, down at the plant. So there is going to be very limited access for all of you guys to enter the plant now. Um, you'll have to either make an appointment or try and catch us on the fly, but we're going to request you guys to make appointments to uh, come and see us down there at the plant, okay? My email's on this sheet. You can email me requesting to set up an appointment. You can text me to set up an appointment. Um, my cell phone is on, on the sheet. Uh, the inspection forms, the website is there on the sheet for you guys to uh, download the inspection forms. They're updated, so please take a look at that. Um, while we're on it, I, I hope everybody grabbed a, an inspection form, a sheet. There's been a, a minor change. We added the lateral ID. Uh, a spot for the, you guys to write that in that helps identify which lateral we're looking at. If you, there's four on the property and you guys can only find the one, uh, we need you guys to fill that in. We need actually everything to be filled in, but we'll go over that a little bit more as we, as we um, go into the presentation here. Um, with that, one more time. You guys got the sheet to sign a, uh, sign in with. Leave it with us, correct? Anybody did not? Did anybody did not get this sheet? Okay. So for, for those of you that have been a part of this program for a number of years, um, some of this has changed and some of it has not. Um, this is our sewer lateral inspection program. The, the, our training objectives are, are, are as follows. We're going to review the scope and intent of the city sewer lateral inspection program. We're going to review uh, standards, uh, inspection forms, and the direction for completions, okay? Uh, specifications for the video inspection, review of the forms and procedures for completion. So originally, the program was was launched in 2007 um, as the program. And obviously, those of you that have been around, there was uh, incentives back then that the city had allocated money for. That we blew through that money real fast. A lot of people got on board and were were, were 
taking advantage of that $2,000 rebate that the city was offering. We then ran out of money for that. Program was put on hold. Um, and then in 2013, it was revamped. And at that time, we had decided to go after commercial properties um, with the intent to have all commercial properties uh, have their laterals inspected by 2023. So that's a 10 year span. Um, commercial, the condominiums, uh, three or more uh, dwellings on, on a property. And then for the residential, um, if a spill, private spill happens, they'll, they will receive, and this goes for commercial as well, they will receive a, um, a slip letter having the, uh, requiring them to inspect their sewer lateral. Um, if during the routine of, of CCTVing, the city main structure, our staff comes across a defect and or roots within a lateral that will too require a uh, letter being sent to the residential properties as well. Uh, for permitting, if it's 400 square feet or more, or two or more plumbing fixtures, they will be required to uh, submit a video of the inspection uh, of the lateral. Um, sewer lateral inspection programs, other issues uh, such as shared laterals. Inspection is required only on portion of the lateral on owner's property and in the public right of way. So if there's a front and back house split, shared uh, we're going to require that front house be done and then into the public right away and then we would have to deal with the uh, property behind it separately um, for septic tanks same requirements for inspection as the laterals uh, for uh, exemptions if they installed a new lateral uh, within the past 20 years that would be they'd be exempt now they may have installed a new lateral but not done anything with the y that doesn't count you will still have to be turn in a a video inspection of that line of that lateral um, if the line was inspected in the last three years and we happen to send off a letter requiring them to inspect and they were issued a CLC that would be exempt because they were already given one within that last three years with the exemption of of the uh, lateral spilling or roots or the defect found within that uh, connection our permits in in what's waivable uh, open trench they start at sixty two dollars and, and go up from there is that waivable? Yes, that is a waivable fee. Um, what I mean by waivable is that it's not free because it comes out of wastewater funds. We're paying for that that permit, so that cost would not be um, charged to the customer. Uh, boreholes, eighty-eight dollars and up. Yes, that fee is waivable also. Um, traffic control, eighty dollars up to $1,300, and yes, that one is waivable as well. The Y connection installation, um, th those fees for a four inch is $746.75 for a four inch, and then $767.35 for a six inch, and that fee is never waivable, okay? Reason being is that we have a outside contractor come in that we have to pay to have, uh, have it installed. Okay. Um, on the building side, uh, the uh, backwater valve permit for that you're looking at 222. That's not waivable. Uh, clean out permit 283, and that is not waivable. Um, again, these these fees were adopted in July of 2017 for the fiscal year 2018. These will uh, expire June 30, 
30th, 30th, they will expire. Uh, there is uh, a, a fee resolution. You could find that at the, the website on there, and, and it'll tell you well, what the news fees will be. Okay? With that, I'm going to ask Stephanie to step up, and she's going to share a little bit about the, the Public Works uh, permitting and stuff. Hi, everybody. So I'm here. I work at the Public Works counter, as you know. So I'm here to talk about when you need a Public Works permit. So once you get this letter and it's determined that the lower lateral has to be replaced or the Y, then you come to the Public Works counter. So um, it's the, see the property line there in Curb and Street. The owner's responsibility it goes from the building to the main line. And where the property line is, the lateral, that's public works and also the Y. But there's always a case when there is an easement uh, on property, then you come to us too. So any time you have to replace the Y, you come to us. Uh, next one. Okay, so what do we need with a public works permit? We do need contractor with an uh, appropriate license, insurance, and city, Barbara, city of Santa Barbara business license. We also need construction information. So you need to tell us what you have to do. You need a trench, trenchless, um, sidewalk replacement, whatever you need to do. Next one is a temporary traffic control. So we need to know, uh, do you need to close the sidewalk? You need to do a lane closure or most of all, it's a diamond, the TI-15, so you can go by this. Sometimes downtown you would need an engineer traffic control plan, but that's rare. Mostly you just come ahead, go ahead and tell me, okay, I just need the diamond, the TI-15, and be good to go. So the next I would need a schedule. Um, so anytime you do need a lateral, you just say, but don't forget the posting of the signs. It has to be 72 hours before. So we need to know the schedule, what day, what time. The schedule, what's posted there, it's more for the Y replacement. You don't need that with the lateral. So if there is a Y replacement, they only accept Tuesdays and Thursdays. And these are the times from 8 to 10, from 10 to 12, and 1 to 3, and 3 to 5. Um, I, normally it's like a week in front, but they will tell you about this, right? So um, the Y installation itself, uh, the city hired a contractor, so they actually do the Y replacement. But you come to the counter and schedule it with us and get a permit for it. So the fees are, like Dell already mentioned, it's in the fee resolution, and some fees are waived, mostly for the lateral, but uh, Dell is the one who determines <coughs> if or if not. And the Y will never be waived. So I want to talk about the uh, parking signs, right? So I did an example how to fill it out. So um, they have to be posted 72 hours in advance. And you will get them with each public works permit. So you do need to have a public works permit to get these signs. Um, so after you, well, you fill out the date, like you can see the time. Then you put down what kind of project it is, do a replacement or whatever you have to do. And then your contractor information. So the city contact that is our public works calendar. And um, then you put down public works permit 2018. Right now it's 2018 and the public works number. Once you post it, then you put down the date, post the sign, and you actually, after posting, you call parking enforcement at 805-897-3727. Uh, so if you don't have this number, please write it down because that's the number you have to call. And uh, of course, you need to check the signs daily because they will, if they get lost and uh, you can prove that you did post them, you can tow anybody away. So you have to check them. So that's really actually what a public works permit comes with. I don't know if you have questions or at the end, let me know. Okay, thank you. 
Correction, on, on the scheduling for the Ys, um, the times that, that the installations are is 8 o'clock and then 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 3 p.m., okay? Those are the start times for those, for those uh, not, not in between 8 and 10, just, just to clarify that, okay? So contractor sewer tap uh, requirements, uh, all excavations needs to uh, have proper shoring in place per Cal OSHA, okay? Um, and that's five feet or, or deeper. Um, unsafe conditions that are in place upon our, our arrival or contractor's arrival will cause to cancel the scheduled appointment and impose a rescheduling fee, okay? So make sure you guys are aware of that, okay? If, if if they show up and you guys aren't ready, um, there will be a rescheduling fee. Uh, the existing sewer main needs to be completely exposed. Um, there's a diagram there, uh, 18 inches uh, from the center point up, 18 inches down, and three feet minimum across. Um, uh, do not break into the existing VCP pipe, okay? Nobody should be touching that, the, the city main pipe, okay? So let's make sure we don't break that pipe um, before uh, the contractor gets there. Uh, even if there's a liner in there, we don't, we don't want to remove that uh, outside piping. Um, next one, Maribel. So these standards, how, how I review the videos and how I look at them is, is off of the NASCO um, uh, PACP uh, certification training. Okay, I'm certified um, in that, uh, have been for a number of years, and I, I recertify every few years. Um, so when I'm looking at a crack, I'm gonna call it a crack. If I'm looking at it and the crack doesn't go all the way through, it's a crack. But if I'm looking at it and there's a fracture and I can see through it, then it's a fracture. So I'm gonna distinguish those between the two and, and I, I hope you guys would understand um, what I'm calling a fracture versus a crack. Um, the, the fracture is a little more severe than, than a crack is. And then the break is more severe than, than a fracture is. So um, the, the PACP, is, it stands for Pipeline Assessment Certification Program. Um, manages CCTV inspection results, benefits of our system based on the LACP, which is a Lateral Assessment Certification Program. Uh, inspection standards, improves pipes condition grade, quality consistency, which improves ability to identify priorities or prioritizes for pipes, systems uh, rehabilitation and repair, detects changes in pipe condition, um, measures the difference in lateral condition between inspections, direct, objective, and, and consistent, uh, Consistent and, and thorough collection of data to simplif uh, simplify a host of wastewater management tasks. Uh, pro provides separate ratings for structurals and operation and maintenance defects. Considers uh, total number of uh, internal pipe defects within pipe segments and pipe material. Not just depth, age, soil, and service condition. Widely accepted standards to meet 21st century, we're in compliance to meet regulatory requirements. Your submittal packages, a complete clean legible form. We all got one of those. Complete meaning every single item on here needs to be completed, okay? Footage, direction, um, the length, the material, uh, name, address, if the mailing address is the same as the, the, the site address, 
we don't have to fill that in. Um, we are making this this form. You will be capable of going online and filling it in online and then printing it out now. So we are going to make that capable if you guys choose to do that. Okay. And plus, it'll help me be able to read it. Um, the video was acceptable. We're still accepting DVDs, USB, and electronic formats capable of download, viewable, and stored by the city of Santa Barbara. Okay. Unfortunately, YouTube is not one of those. So we can no longer take the YouTube videos. Uh, what is it? Dropbox? Dropbox and our Hightail. Hightail, Dropbox. Uh, those ones uh, have been re uh, working really well for us. Um, so those are some options for you uh, instead of YouTube. We have not. We have not. Um, if it's something that we have to set up an account with um, or download, then we have to get other departments involved, like our IT department, uh, and get administrative rights. So that would be something we'd have to look into if, if you guys are wanting to do that. Okay. Um, this this form here is showing you a completed form. Completed meaning everything is checked off in those boxes that needs to be checked off. Okay. The front side, you did your visual. Well, starting from the top, name, address, phone number, uh, mailing address if it's different, uh, state, city. Uh, the company name is the company you are representing. Representing uh, Inspector is the inspector who did the in video inspection. Uh, the phone number, whether you want to put your, your cell phone as an inspector or you want to put the company, that is just a reference that I, if I have a question that I need to reach out to you quickly, I don't have to go searching uh, through the plumber's list to uh, call you. Um, Sewage, uh, residential, commercial, size, uh, material, um, the date, time, et cetera. Um, what I'm finding out here, what, what a lot of you are forgetting to put on here is the length. Okay, when I go to upload these into our server, um, I have required fields that I have to put in, and length is one of them. So if I don't have the length, then I, I can't upload it uh, into the server. The newest addition to this inspection form is a lateral ID. Um, you guys all have a handout. Lateral ID, when we mail out the letters, it generally has it on there. If there's multiple and you only come across one, again, do your best to identify that if you're capable of identifying it. If you're not, not much you can do out there. It'll, you know, come back to me and I'll have to um, figure it out. Backside, a lot of people are writing on the backside. In the summary, all they're writing is, you know, uh, found roots. You know, there was roots throughout the line or whatever. Um, when I get calls from the, the the property owners asking me, and I can't look at your form because you nobody wrote anything in the form under footages or, or uh, what it was, I can't explain to them why you guys didn't put that down, but why I put it down when I reviewed the video, there, there's a conflict there. So, you know, they're thinking somebody's lying to them. So uh, that's why it's important for you guys to fill this out, especially you guys see a crack, break, fracture, something that has to be identified, please put it down. You know, if you guys skip change of pipe, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to hold you guys to that. But understand, you know, the major things, the roots, the cracks, the breaks, that stuff, that that I have to, you know, answer the, to the property owners about this kind of stuff. Um, if anything is not filled out on this, we're, we're going to reject this, okay? You know, we may try, if we have time, to give you a courtesy call. But right now, we have a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff coming in, and um, our plates are full right now. So um, 
to try and chase somebody down, I just don't think right now we, we don't have that time. Um, if we have a few extra minutes, maybe we will. Um, but we're going to try and stay consistent with this. So please um, need your guys' help with this. Okay. Uh, the lateral inspection program webpage, it's there, up there on the, uh, on the screen there. Um, the, your video should be clear, well lit, color, traveling no more than 20 feet a minute. Um, you come to a defect, roots, break, fracture, cracks, um, voids. Uh, hold for five seconds because I have to take a still shot of that picture. And we generally like to in, insert that picture with the letter going out to the property owners to tell them, here's the, here's the repair, this is what it looks like. Okay, so if you hold it for five seconds, it gives me a chance to uh, snap that uh, picture. Um, common reasons for lateral inspection for rejection. Okay, speed, I haven't had that over this past year. It hasn't been too bad. Um, but, you know, let's, let's keep that, that speed to 20 feet per minute. Uh, not holding the, for that defect long enough for me to take a snapshot. Um, Missing footage on the counter. That is something that will definitely get you a reject. Not meaning to you, we're going to send the property owner rejecting the video. Um, I have to explain to them at what footage. So if they're calling me and I don't see a footage on the screen, I can't tell them where the footage is or where the repair is. So that's why it's important to have that footage on there. Uh, light intensity. If it's too dark, I mean, if I can't if I can't see and I, I can't assess it, I mean, I can't guess. I'm I'm not gonna try and guess. Um, the lens is dirty, smudged. A little quick wipe off, or you know, drop it in the the sewer main and, and try and clean it off as you're coming back. Um, again, I, I talked about uh, identifying the, the defects on the back and incomplete inspection forms. The reason why one of the questions on the inspection form asks if there's any drains is because of the excessive water that uh, gets dumped in. Yes, one, you know, you may think you're at one property and it's not that big of a deal, it's only one, but if we get a whole block, you know, dumping illegal drains into the lateral, that's, you know, coming down to the treatment plant and, you know, we have a heavy rain event, it's hard for that plant to keep up with, with trying to treat all that, that sewer. So um, that's why you know we we want you guys to please help identify any illegal connections to the sewer system. We don't expect you guys to use smoke testing or anything like that. You know your visual, your inspection as you're doing the inspection of the the lateral, you should be able to see if any other lines are tying in that shouldn't be tying in. Uh, backwater valve. Obviously, we know that if your your plumbing fixture sits lower than the upstream manhole, then it's going to be required to have a backwater valve. Um, we are are not out there on site like you guys are. You guys are the ones that have to make that determination if the backwater valve is going to be needed for that property. Um, once you guys make that determination, we will go ahead and then send them the letter based off of what you guys uh, are saying they need so if you guys say they need it then we're going to send it tell them they need it now if i get requested to to come out and do a site visit you know because there's question um there's two ways to handle that i, I can have them get it surveyed tell the, the property owner have it surveyed see if you're going to really need it i can come out and i can give um, my professional opinion on that these are just different types of uh um Backflow devices or backwater valves that we use or, or that could be used. So going into our construction methods, this, we have the standard methods, your conventional dig replace method. I don't know how many people are doing that these days, but that's still available. You got your pipe bursting method. Um, I think a lot of you have, have done a part, a, some of that. Um, we added uh, lateral lining 
this past year. We made that an option. Um, again, those methods require, a, well, I guess it, it's a cured in place, CIPP, lighting using inversion, lighting method. That's going to require a pre-approval, uh, and it's a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Uh, it will require special inspection and post video. Why replacement if liner protrudes into the city main? If that liner is, is um, inserted and it goes into the city sewer system, um, then that Y obviously is going to be replaced and, and that's going to be cut out. Okay. Um, these are the guidelines to to requesting to have the lateral um, lined first and foremost to initiate um, a request to have a line uh, or a lateral uh, line using the trencherless uh, CIPP technology. Uh, you have to get a written or a written request must be submitted to to Dale Escobar myself, the slip coordinator. Uh, we need the, the lateral ID, the address, the contractor, and the material proposed to be used. Okay. Uh, Dale Escobar and myself will review requests and provide an approval on it if acceptable to the city. Our response will generally include a copy of the trenchless uh, lateral lining guidelines. You guys all got a copy of that uh, this afternoon. Um, once approved, a uh, contractor may schedule an appointment. Lateral lining appointments are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Time slots are 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 1 p.m. Any uh, except, uh, exception or rescheduling will require pre-authorization um, at least 24 hours in advance. Um, the slip coordinator or other our other authorized city wastewater staff will be present during the installation of the liner. So uh, myself or one of the other uh, wastewater staff authorized will be on site during this process. Okay. That there there'll be no exceptions with that. Only licensed contractors allowed to work in the public right of way will be allowed to perform, perform lateral lining work. Okay. Reason behind that is that if there is any thing that goes wrong in the public right of way and you're not licensed to, to work in the public right of way, that is going to cause a delay. So instead of us taking that chance, especially if it goes into the city uh, sewer main in, in potentially causing a, a SSO, um, we opted to keep it to um, the contractors that have the license to work in the public right away. Um, The, the, shoo, shoo. Okay, the contractor will be responsible for all traffic control necessary during the course of this job. Okay, so during the process of this job, it's the same as doing a, a piper. So, you know, you're fully responsible for maintaining that, that traffic control. Uh, failure to follow the procedures outlined above may result in the contractor being liable for any damages to the city's sewer main or cost recovery for city staff to respond to a spill related to a lateral lining. Uh, example is if they line into a city main and it causes an SSO and we're out there having to spend <clears throat> a few hours to uh, clean up or mitigate the problem, uh, that contractor that, that has that job will be held uh, responsible for that cost and recovery. A post lining CCTV video of the lateral, showing the entire lateral, including the Y, is going to be re required uh, within 24 hours of the installation of that uh, liner. 
Again, it, it, if the liners intruding into the city main require gr uh, grinding, um, a portion, or, or let me see, will require grinding the por uh, protruding portion within 24 hours from the insertion, insertion date or uh, replacement of the Y. And again, you will have to get, uh, you know, I'd have to be notified and we would have to have one of our staff uh, on site uh, during that process of whoever's going in from that manhole. Um, at this time, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Bradley Rare, the the wastewater superintendent. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Bradley Rare. I'm the Wastewater Collection System Superintendent for the City of Santa Barbara. This is uh, my second year in the position, and uh, my main role as part of the SLIP program is to make sure that you're all getting the best customer service from my staff um, as part of the SLIP program. Um, as Dale alluded to, our program has really uh, increased the volume of sewer lateral work over the last about year, year and a half. We're taking a much more aggressive stance on um, getting defective laterals in the city of Santa Barbara uh, repaired, rehabilitated, um, or renewed so that basically they do not cause as much problems for the city sewer main as they have in the past. So um, what I really just want to ask of you guys is, first and foremost, please treat uh, my staff with respect. And if you're getting anything less than uh, what you would expect from the city, um, you're fully welcome to give me a call, come talk with me, and I'm happy to hear kind of what may be going on. Um, we are dealing with a lot of cases. Dale and Maribel are really the only two that are processing all the cases that are going through the city. Right now, um, Adam Hendel and his staff are helping on the public works permitting side. So um, please be patient, and if you have anything you'd really like to bring up, um, definitely come um, discuss it with me. I'm happy to meet with you anytime. Um, we're very pleased to have Michelle Beeson here with uh, National Plant Services today. Um, she is somebody I've known for the last several years. Uh, she's done, her, con her company has done contracting work with the city for cleaning. And uh, she and I met, I think about a year and a half ago to start talking about some of the services that they provide um, to municipalities and, and to private property owners um, to utilize some technology that's out there to help uh, cost effectively uh, rehabilit rehabilitate and repair sewer laterals. Um, to provide property owners a really good cost-effective solution. So uh, we've asked Michelle today to come in and speak about her her products. There are other ones out on the market um, that are similar technology, but hers is probably one of the more advanced that I've seen out there. Um, the more, the less we have to dig up the public right away, the better it's going to be. And so I really hope that you guys will give uh, uh, Michelle calls on any kind of technical questions you have so that um, you can investigate looking into her product. Um, but do your research and look at other products as well, too. We don't want to just look like we're endorsing one, but I do know Michelle's product is a uh, product that we're very interested in um, deploying in the city of Santa Barbara. So anyway, with that, um, I'll stay afterwards if anybody has any questions um, uh, for me. So thank you, Michelle. Okay, um, again, hi everyone. I'm Michelle Beeson with National Plant Services. Go back to the main slide for a second because I'm going to just blab on for a little bit. So National Plant Services has been based in Long Beach since 1981. And we're a sewer maintenance contractor. We generally do mainline cleaning and TV cleaning for cities. So we have three main buckets. We do cleaning, inspection services, and trenchless rehabilitation services. And again, we contract for cities. So I'm not here to take your jobs working with the homeowners, right? We generally wor work for bigger projects encompassing many different aspects of the city uh, system. So, but like as Brad said, he saw our product and thought, hey, how can we get this out to you? Because I'm not going to go to each your homeowners and try to sell lateral lining. But but we think, hey, if we can group you together, and I've been already getting calls from some of the plumbers, hey, I have a lateral over here, I have a fee over here. If we pull you together, it's more effective for everyone. And not every technology is going to work for every situation, but I'm here to show you what our technology is so that it may, um, you may think of it for something that you may need in the future. Okay, now go forward. So service connecting lining. The neat thing about our lining is that it goes from inside the main line. You can click there you go. So oftentimes, even if a line is CIPP lined, 
Uh, what happens when you use CIPP in mainline, they use polyester resins. And they grout it. It looks real nice at first. But what happens? That shrinks, right? So all those laterals they cut out, that's a great place for water and roots and everything else to come into the main lines. And then going up toward the house, you know, old clay pipes get broken, roots come in, you have infiltration, which again, as Dale was saying, just costs everyone more money because you have to treat all that water. So these T-liners that we have are installed from the main line. So it's, you go, we go inside the manhole and we pull between a section of pipe from manhole to manhole and we would do, use what's called inversion, where we invert these liner tubes up the lateral. And you see a nice before and after. We have three different types, which I'll show you here in a second. But this is uh, it's what's called an LCR, lateral connection repair. So there's w these Ys we're talking about. Let's say you have to fix a Y. You have to dig down. You might break the hose pipe. You have to deal with utilities. You don't have to with, with these T-liners. You can go right from the inside the main line, invert up. It covers that connection. You fix the Y. We're done. If you have a the whole lateral needs repair, we can go all the way up to the house, again, from the main line, up to 100 feet all from inside the pipe. So again, no digging, we don't need to clean out at the house, so it's a very innovative solution. So again, there's three types. We have our LCR, lateral connection repair. There's a packer, you see that little, that little yellow tube, it's around a packer and it's an inflatable packer. And I have a video here in a second because videos are worth a million words in my view. But installed from a packer, we don't need to clean out. It, the lateral goes eight piece goes 18 to 24 inches up the lateral, and we use no shrink resins. So just like I mentioned that CIPP example in the main lines, we don't use those polyester resins that shrink. We use either silicate or epoxy resins. And the end result, here's an example of a MTH liner, it stays tight forever. Okay, so there's no shrinking, there's no way for water to come back through that pipe. And then I mentioned we also have the main to house, which is an also installed from the packer. No clean out, can go up to 100 feet from the main line, and we use steam cure epoxy. And the reason for that is, if you think about it, we're impregnating a really long tube, and that takes more time. We don't want an ambient cure resin that's going to go off on us, right? So there's epoxies, which are these blue resins, that start to set off and get hard in the presence of heat. So that's why we use the steam cure epoxy for the MTH to give us more working time. And that's the video I'm going to show you the process there. We also have clean out shots like, you know, Dale was mentioning and Brad, you don't want a, a liner to go into the main line, right? We can do that too. And a lot of plumbers use um, clean out shots of resins, but we can do the same thing. We measure with our lateral launch camera to make sure we're not going to go into the main line because we don't want to have to cut that back out. And this material can go 300 feet from a clean out. So we can go through a clean out if you need to. We're doing some, a project in Portland. We have some 200, 300 foot long laterals. So we're doing an MTH from the main and then we're shooting back over it from the clean out. And again, we use the steam cure epoxy. So we use a process called inversion. So again, we, we have a control unit in the truck. We have a big 32 foot truck set up with all the we have a boiler, we have cameras that are watching on, on the packer. We, have, we pull the packer into position and there's a pathfinder that kind of clicks in place of the lateral. So we know we're in the right place, right? That's a patented feature that we have. And then we set the pressure and inflate to around 10 PSI and it'll inflate and push itself and actually roll itself inside out. So we have the resin part inside with a coating can't see from here, but there's a special thermo thermoplastic coating on the outside, which means it won't melt in the presence of heat. So when we insert it, it's resin side in, and actually when it inverts, it actually turns itself inside out all the way up the lateral so that the resin side is touching the pipe. So now we'll show the video, which will show everything. Is there sound in this video? Oh, is there a sound? Maybe see if there's the volumes up. There's sound on the video, but we need to make sure that there's no system. Okay, I'll just talk. Okay. So we first clean the main, main line and lateral. So that's the first step. So you'll have to decide you want us to clean or you're going to clean. We set up all the safety equipment. We measure and cut the lateral liner based on our TV inspection because, again, we want it to be right on. So depending if we're doing the silicate or epoxy resins, we mix a hardener. And once we mix the hardener, the time starts clicking. We then hook up a vacuum port, and the vacuum helps pull the resin through and make sure we have really good saturation. So here's the epoxy. This is a steam cure epoxy. We pour it in the liner and the, we kind of push it through and that vacuum is helping to pull it through. We then roll it through some, a liner. This is all in our 32-foot truck. We're, we roll it through the, um, 
the rollers to make sure we have nice impregnation of the liner. And then this is a patented feature we have. It's the end cap. It has a little hole in the end. So it inflates like a balloon, and it's what helps us invert. When we put air, right, it wants to go somewhere. Like air is filling this big, long tube and helping it turn inside out, and it's because of that, that, that cap at the end. So we blot the excess resin. We put it in an ice bath till we're ready because even though it's epoxy cure, uh, steam cured epoxy, it will go off after a while. So we put it in a, an ice bath just to make sure it, it doesn't... Uh, start setting up too fast, and then we get everything else ready. So we have a launch tube, and the launch tube is going to go inside the main line. So that end cap, which is what makes it help, helps it inflate, is attached to a cable, and that cable is pulled through this long black tube you see there. And this goes inside the main line and will sit in there and um, hold the lateral liner piece till we're ready to launch it. So then we pull it through, we coat the liner in peanut oil, it just makes it slide a little better. Through the, through the tube. So we pull it through. And so we'll be up to set up at this manhole we'll, we'll enter, and then we'll be at the other manhole uh, with, a, with the winch and another crew person. So then we wrap, that's the, la that's the main line piece. So that piece is going to be what's, what you see inside the main line when we're done. It's the T-liner. And there's the basket. So when that Packer goes in there, it's going to click into place to tell us we're in the right spot. So we wrap that mainline piece around and we, we put some rubber bands and we use number 12 rubber bands because they break. Otherwise, they won't break. So when it inflates, that packer is going to inflate, those rubber bands, bands break and pushes it against the, um, the pipe wall. So now we, lo we load that launch tube into the mainline. And there's a camera on the packer, so we're able to see everything uh, that's going on and where if we're in the right position. And we have footage counters, so we know when we're pulling through, we know we're at the right lateral that we're going to do. So it's the same general process if we're doing the short liners, but again, you don't have the launch tube because we don't need it. It's all contained inside the packer. So if we're just doing a little T-liner, it's a much more simple process. And there's a balloon, actually, for the LCR. I don't have a video of the LCR, but this is a more complicated setup when we're doing the long liners. The short liners are a lot faster. So we get it in place, we wipe that camera lens. This was just in Carpentria last summer. I shot this video. We did 60 laterals for them. So back in the truck, once it's in place, the packer's pulled into position, the camera's watching, and we get in the right location. And then when we're ready, that pathfinder is raised, and we lock into place, and then he's going to inflate with air. He's going to use air to start inflating. So you can see that's the bladder on the packer. It's going to inflate, and then now the air wants to go somewhere, so it's going to go start filling that liner and pulling it and pushing it up the lateral, again, up to 100 feet from the main line. So once it's inflated, we wait. We're inflating. We're waiting for the pressure to build up, and the guy's holding a cable, right? He's holding the end of the cable. We have the cable marked because you're like, well, how do you know it's all the way up? He's getting pulled, so that's him. I've seen them kind of fly through the air because sometimes they take off so fast. But we like a general launch, and he just gets pulled by the cable, and when that cable passes a point on the sidewalk, we know, okay, we're fully inverted, and we're ready to cure because we don't want to cure if it's all bunched up inside. So now we introduce steam. It'll vent through the clean-out or the roof fence of the house. It takes about 30, 40 minutes, and then we pull uh, the end cap off, and then we're on to the next one, and there's a finished result. So you can do this in line, mainline pipe. You can do it in unlined pipe. It doesn't matter the material. It'd be concrete, clay, PVC. It doesn't make any difference. And there's me being silly. <laughs> okay, go to the next one. Okay, any questions about the lateral process real quick before I tell you what we... Yes? Flow, um, we, we, the resins will not wash out in the presence of water. So if it's very, if it's a small diameter pipe and not a lot of water, we just let it build up and kind of watch it. Right. Sometimes we'll take a vector and kind of suck the water off if it gets too high. If it's a lot of water, we'll bypass because we can go up to 21 inch diameter main line. So we will bypass if necessary. It depends on if we're going short liners or long liners. Um, the, short, the short liners can be, you know, 1,700, 1,800 for a short liner. The main line liners can be, if they go long, three, four thousand dollars generally, three, four, five. 
depends. But what we're trying to do is pool people together. If we have to come from Long Beach to do one, it's going to be a lot more expensive than that. So it's better if we get maybe a week work or a few days work, come out for the trip, and spread the cost among everybody for the MOAB charges. So what do we need to quote your project? So I've been getting a few calls where you're like, hey, give me a price. And I'm like, okay, well, I need to know, I need to know a few things. So I have a little handout, and it's in the presentation what I need. But I need a clear video, what the lotto looks like. What does the connection look like? Is there accurate, accurate footage? And note any changes in the size. I need to know the size of the main line and the size of the lateral, because we have different packers depending on what size the main line is. And we need to know that we have the right piece, the right transition. Is it an 8 to 6, an 8 to 4, an 8 to 3, a 10 to 6, whatever it is. I need to know that. And I also need to know, is it, is it a Y or a T? This is a T connection, but we make Y bags. That way we have less wrinkles, right? You don't want to put a T and a Y because you're going to have a little wrinkle here. It isn't a big deal, but we want a nice end result. So we will order everything to fit. So you want to note the lateral pipe change, all the defects in the pipe, any offsets, any infiltration, any bends in the lateral, any cleanouts or junctions. We need the address, size of the main, size of the lateral. Then, I, like I said, T or Y. Is there a clean out? Oh, that's not necessary for our system unless we're doing the long shots. So if we have a really long lateral and we need to do a clean out shot for some reason, we'll need a clean out then, but not for the T-liner or the 100 footers. And then are you going to provide the traffic control or do you want us to? And then the cleaning uh, of the main line and lateral is required and would you want us to do that or will you do it? So that's what I need to know and we can um, give you a price and hopefully, like I said, pull a few together. I'm working with a few people right now that are interested and have special situations, so it saves, saves everyone money. Yes? Is there a warranty? We say generally a year, but we've had them in the ground for, we've been installing these since 2006, and we, we, we generally do a year, but they're, they last for 50 years. You can tell right away. It's, it's a, it's a non-shrink product, so as soon as we inspect it when we're done, you'll know if it's, if it's good or not. It's not going to shrink. It's not going to fail. We generally do you know, one year. What do you expect? <laughs> well, we, we can do case by case basis, but generally, like I said, once you inspect it, it's not like it's going to fail. It's, it's, a, it's a final product. The inspection proves that it's in good and in good shape. So it's not like CIPP that's going to shrink like if it was a polyester resin. But we've done three year warranties on our Midwest company. It really depends on the firm. But generally, it's one to two years, is what we say. We'll come back no, with no cost. Yes? Yes, as far as I know. But it, case by case basis, you'll have to submit it to him, and he'll have to tell you if that case would pass. But it sure beats digging into the street and. <laughs> right. Right, it's better to line the main line first, always, and then come do the lateral second. Obviously, if it's protruding, it's not going to work. Yes, but we can, like the stretchy material, we can do offsets, we can do bends, we can do 90s. So, again, we would look at the case, and, and they'd have to approve if that's what they want. Some cities are very particular. They don't want any, you know, they don't want an offset joint. They would make them fix it. You have to decide that because we can go through offset joints, but if the city won't approve that, then that would be up to them. Yes. If you guess it was more fees, would there be an additional charge to clean for you guys to clean the city main? Because you have to have the city main clean. We clean. we would usually do that, yeah, you or you would have them. Do, I don't know if you would do it, but we usually do it as part of our task. Okay, so that'd, that'd, be included. that'd be included in the price to clean the lateral and the main line. Yeah, I can follow up on that a little bit more. Um, so on the, okay. for, on the cleaning of this city sewer main, if it's a component of the work for a lateral, um, we would we would most likely require you to include it in your work. It would be coordination with National Plant Services to do the cleaning. We wouldn't have our staff go out and do cleaning. We would have uh, Michelle's staff do it if they were the one contracted to do it. Um, once that's done and they're ready to proceed with that work, then then we would be all right with it. Um, Brad, excuse me, can you speak into the mic, please? Oh, sure. So um, just to kind of restate that, um, we would have you coordinate using Michelle or her company to do the cleaning in the main line. They're a general A contractor. They can help. Uh, they can coordinate that with us, access the manhole, set up all the traffic control, do that. 
and it, we would just need to be notified and it would fall under the public works permit that you would be operating under. But, but that will add to the cost if we have to clean your main line. If you have a couple, you know, things in one street, it's obviously better because we clean the main line once for like two laterals. If we have to clean a whole main line for one lateral, it does a little bit more cost. Anything else? Yes. So generally, we, we always give notice a day before we're going to start work, telling them to please don't use their water during the process. Before we start, we'll knock on the door, and usually it's no more than two hours that they shouldn't use. Now, if they have to go to the bathroom, it's no problem. They could flush the toilet. We just don't want them doing laundry or putting a lot of water down that it might back into their house. Two hours max. Yeah, I have a, hand, a little fact sheet of what I will need. I have some brochures and I have cards. And then they're gonna put, they're gonna post this presentation on the website so you can look at it again if you want to. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, any future slip um, com uh, communication and training. This is a, a, an annual certification program training. Um, you can find this, uh, you, are, you will be able to find this one on the, the city's uh, SLIP webpage. Um, it, it's there um, for you. Um, with that, thank you. Uh, I'll be here to answer questions after.